Um, actually, it was my first time flying in a plane ever. Um, it was my first time out of the country, actually pretty much out of like New England. Um, so I was very nervous to get on the plane, but it ended up ne not being as bad as I thought, um, but takeoff was really scary and landing. Um, but going to another country, like I've always wanted to go to Italy, so going to Rome was just an amazing experience, and um, it was just everything I'd hoped it would be. Well, uh, what I would say is do it. I mean, it was, it was the best experience of my life. I mean, when I came to Southern, I knew I was going to, I wanted to study Italian, be an Italian teacher, probably somewhere near my hometown. And when I went to Tuscany and I went to Rome, Siena, Florence, I was, and I got to be a part of the culture. I got to try the food. I got to meet people. I got to use the language. Like, I just loved it. And now, like, the whole culture has had this big impact on me more than I thought it would. And now I want to, I'm thinking about getting my master's possibly in Italy to get um, a degree in like gastronomy and tourism. And I never, like, maybe like a month ago, if you asked me, would you be interested in that? I'd be like, no, I don't think so. Studying abroad was honestly one of the most uh, mind opening things I've ever done. I just love to travel and explore. I'm a psychology major. I um, Honestly, I saw that I had to satisfy my credits, and I love to travel, and I saw Tuscany, and I was like, I need to go there. And I've never had roommates or anything before, and I stayed with Annie and three other girls, and honestly, I come back, and they're my best friends now, so it was awesome, man. Just talking to people, I would have to talk to them only in Italian, so it really pushed myself to have to speak the language, and... Just coming back, I, um, I tell everyone it's like waking up from a really good dream and I just want to go back. I would definitely encourage it for, every, for anyone who's thinking about going. Um, you know, Bermuda was so, so close, it was so easy to get to, it was less than a two hour flight. Um, we were only there for one week, but I couldn't believe how much we packed into that one week. Um, learned a lot, still managed to have a lot of fun. And I think the thing I learned the most about myself is that I need to stay more active. We did a lot of hiking and snorkeling while we were there, and um, I felt great by the end of the week, and I learned that I need to stay more active. And overall, I mean, the island was gorgeous. Um, the people were some of the friendliest people I've ever met, and uh, it wasn't enough time. I can't wait to go back. I was debating going to Rome for a really long time because I knew I always wanted to go, but I was really scared to do something that I felt like I was going out and doing by myself. I was like, I can't go alone. I need a friend with me or I need like a family member or something. But being there and like being with strangers, you kind of make your own family because you're depending on these people like while you're completely like in a whole different place and you don't know anyone so the people that you're with you get very close with and it ends up being like a really great experience like meeting new people and it's just it was just so it was amazing. We had a lot of opportunities. I um, break danced in the middle of Plaza Mayor and earned euros. That was awesome. I did that a few times. I just saw other people street performing and I was like hey porque no why not. So I did it and it worked and that was amazing. I, um, we got to go horseback riding. I never thought I'd do that. Friend felt like I was Prince of Persia or like in the, another century, just like cruising around. But the one down that everybody had was that it was so much fun that we could not help but just sleep isn't important. We're just gonna stay up. So literally I found out that I could fall asleep almost horseback riding which I didn't think would be possible, but I was dozing off. Like, it was so much fun, but it was really to that point, like, the only down you could say was, like, you push your body to the limits because we all had one thing in common, and that's what, that we wanted to take advantage of this experience so hardcore. One more thing that was my favorite part about Spain was that every single day was just magical. It had something, every day contained something so magical. For example, like one night we were just hanging out at a skate park and you look to your right and there's the Roman bridge which was born in the first century and it's like 75% still completely intact, authentic. 
and people just walk over it like it's nothing but when we walk over it we're like oh, is this real like <laughs> i can't believe this doesn't happen in america you know and we left the skate park and you go up a hill and we heard like this classical music and we were like oh where's that coming from and you get to the new cathedral and it just so happens that it was the 400th anniversary of the new cathedral and it's beautiful and ancient and lit up and every night it looks that beautiful and it was just every day was that magical all right um well the end of the trip we finished off in Reykjavik which is the capital of Iceland and um it's a pretty decent sized city and uh I went to go skate last day I was there. I brought my board and I wanted to skate the entire time and Reykjavik actually had some pretty good spots. So last day we were there was, um, last full day was Sunday. We flew out on a Monday. So I go out to this plaza on Sunday to go skate and um, I go and sit down on this bench. I had talked to some kids earlier and they said they were gonna go at like four o'clock. So I was supposed to go meet up with them to go skate. I didn't see him there. So I sat down for like five, 10 minutes and um, this, uh, this little blonde girl sitting across from me comes up and approaches me and she was like, um, so are you gonna skate? She's like, what are you doing? I was like, yeah, I was just waiting to meet up with some kids though, you know? And she was like, well, do you mind if I take some photos of you? And I was like, yeah, sure, you know, let me warm up. And she was like, well, actually I have my own company. She was like, would you mind modeling for me? And I was like, I guess, you know, like why not? And then before you know it, there's like three, four of the girls that come over from like over on the bench to the side and I like didn't even know like these people were around. They kind of like, Swarming. Me and three other girls from Southern went on a weekend trip to Paris and um, we like didn't plan it that well. We bought our plane tickets and we were like, yeah, we'll just like find a hostel to stay in. Like this won't be a big deal. So we like get there and it's the weekend that the Tour de France is ending and we didn't realize it. So like everywhere is booked. We're there. We get there at like, like 7 p.m. We're like walking around. We have like stuff on our backs it's like packed like people i apparently people like travel to see the end of the tour de france um like the whole center of paris was full of people like so many people were like oh my god like where are we we have no we can't we're like trying to speak french no we none of us know french um <laughs> we are asking everyone if they can speak english like luckily a lot of people in paris speak english but we're like walking around trying to find somewhere to stay on like a more broad spectrum I think it was really unexpected how much free time we all actually had. Like when we sat down before we left, we got a packet of paper like this big and like we had every single day like planned out by the hour and we're like, oh my God, it's going to be so hectic. It's so crazy. But like we actually had a lot of free time to kind of roam and do our own thing. And um, I think that was something that was really good about the trip. Um, one thing that was unexpected for me was um, the weather. I know people are like, oh my gosh, you're going to Iceland, like it's going to be cold, and I'm like, yeah, probably, but you know, whatever, and when I got there, I realized that I had never actually seen rain before, because it rained so hard, and the last few days that we were uh, staying at the farm at Scalanus, that, um, and this farm is like in the middle of nowhere, mind you, on the edge of a cliff, overlooking the ocean, mountains everywhere, there's like, n there's nothing for a really long time, and um, one day it, it rained so hard that the dirt roads to get there washed out in multiple points so that we couldn't actually leave even if we had wanted to. <clears throat> and um, there was one night where it was, it was just downpour and we had been stuck in the house for like a day and a half and everyone's kind of going stir crazy. And I just really wanted to get out of the house and I was like, come on, like, let's, let's just go to town. Like, we, can, we can make it. And <laughs> nobody except for Anthony was brave enough to go out with me, so it's like monsooning outside. It is so, it is so bad. It's freezing cold. The wind is blowing, <laughs> and we're walking in the rain. Got our backpacks on. I got like my my rain jacket on. I got my my rain boots. We're like bundled up. Doesn't matter. Soaked through to the bone, anyways. And we're like walking through all these big puddles and like all the streams had turned Change to rapids. Clothes were soaked. Everything, Everything in the was bags. just it was just, it was destroyed. Awful. Um, traveling with um. The faculty was actually really fun. I didn't, not that I didn't think it, think it would be, but um, just, I remember being stuck in the airport, going through security, um, having Dr. Frackless, who for anyone who knows him is just hilarious and cracking jokes and Dr. Flynn always staying calm and they would, they were just so nice and just taking us out to dinner and we would just all have like this family dinner and just kind of talk about our day and just, it was fun bonding with them and then just 
getting to know them better off of a just like professor and class kind of basis type of thing. But um, it, it's amazing how you think that your professor is going to be that way and they turn out to just be opposite. And just to finish that thought, throughout the trip, Dr. Palma was always on me because my mother would call me. I had a phone from Italy that I bought or borrowed from a friend. And uh, my mother would call me and ask me how I was doing. And one day she said, you know, you shouldn't be on your phone talking to your mother all the time. You need to be independent. This coming from the woman who was always on me about my hair and my appearance, telling me I would never find a nice Italian girl looking like that. And just always making sure that I was eating every day and coming over if I, she hadn't seen me that day and making sure I was feeling all right. And it was just so funny. The reason why she didn't want me talking to my mom is because she was too busy being my mom on the trip. So... <laughs> You know, I really miss hanging out with Dr. Palma, but yeah, you shouldn't fear your professor because they're going to turn out to be fantastic.